Hey guys, in this video I'm going to compare the Shure SM57 to the Pile PCM IC78. They look almost exactly the same. If you look very closely, there's a little bit of a difference in the head here, but I mean, they look exactly the same. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. In a previous video, I had compared these two mics and how they sound micing toms. Now, in that video, I internally mounted two of these pile mics inside both of my toms for the kit that I use live when I'm playing with a band that has a front house system. Um, and uh, Daniel McBride had put in the comments a suggestion that I compare these two mics uh, and how they perform miking the snare. He actually has a valid point because the snare drum is a much different animal and um, it has a different frequency response. So I got curious. So I decided that I was going to test these two mics on how they perform miking the snare. All right, so. Um, before I get to any of that, I have to do the obligatory unboxing because, after all, this is YouTube. All right, now that we have that out of the way, something interesting. As I'm holding these two mics in my hand, the, this, the SM57 is significantly heavier. And I don't really know why. But um, it comes in at roughly 10.2, 10.3 ounces, whereas the pile mic comes in at 6.1-ish, thereabouts. So that's kind of interesting. All right, so I AB'd both mics. I had them recording me playing uh, simultaneously, so um, this is going to be as accurate as I know how to make it. So here we go. I'm going to play you kick, snare, overhead, and hi-hat. Now, if you look here, when you see this means this mic is not muted, this mic is. This means this mic is not muted, this mic is. In other words, whenever you see this sort of rectangle, that means that mic is the active mic. So I'm bouncing back and forth between the two. Uh, this is the best way I know how to A-B it objectively. The other thing is I'm not exactly confident in YouTube's ability to faithfully reproduce the audio. So I'm not sure you're going to even be able to hear the same type of difference I'm hearing. So I'm going to show you in real time the EQ curves being generated by each mic. And uh, you'll see what I'm hearing. <clears throat> I know that doesn't make sense, but it will. So anyway, here we go. Two bars from one mic to the other, starting with actually this mic, mic B, okay? Here we go. Now I'm going to solo both mics. The same thing is going to happen, but now you're just going to hear the mic tracks going from one to the other. Once again, starting with this mic.
Okay. Now, um, if you heard a difference, then good. That means that Google's compression algorithm is fairly accurate. If you didn't, um, I'm going to bring over two EQ curves and play that again. And I want you to pay attention to the high end area here around 2K in both of these EQ curves. They look very similar. You'll see that the shape of the EQ curve is very similar, but not the same. And then I'm going to tell you which mic is which. So here we go. Okay, um, I'll stop it there. All right, enough of this mystery. Mike A was the 57. Mike B was the pile. Again, I didn't think I was going to hear a difference, but there's just more detail to my ears uh, with the pile mic. And the EQ curve bears that out because, especially in the high end, it was registering uh, higher here in the... Uh, vertical scale up here and 2k to my ears the 57 sounds like it's emphasizing more of the mid-range but that may be that it's just not picking up as much detail on the high end but i definitely hear more detail with the pile mic now the meter is registering the exact same volume so it's not that the um pile mic was actually louder so I did see a little bit of a gain difference but I did the best I could at the preamp stage to get the record levels to be exactly the same and I did that if you look at the meter see up here and then here They're the same volume. The transients are almost exactly at the same level. So it's not like the pile mic was louder. It just seems to be rendering more detail. The really mind-blowing part of this is that the, the pile mic is $12.50 something cents. The 57 is $99. Now, I can't speak to the build quality of the pile mic. The fact that it's almost half the weight of the SM57 does not bode well. I don't know how roadworthy it is. On the left, we have the SM57. On the right, we have the pile mic. I tend to aim them toward the center of the drum, and that's it. And there's Ziva, one of my dogs in the background. Okay. Uh, the two mics on my snare are being routed to this piece here. This is uh, my Audio Technologies 2 microphone amplifier. This channel, the left channel, is the 57. The right channel is the pile mic. And you can see that the gain knob, this blue knob here, is slightly lower than the gain knob for the 57. Uh, I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so the preamp signals are routed to channels 11 and 12 on my ADA 8200. You'll notice that the gain on the 57 is slightly higher than the gain on the pile mic. That's because it turns out when I had the gains equal both here and up here, I, I would, took great care to make sure that the gain knobs were set at exactly the same volume. The pile mic was just louder. So I had to adjust on the way in because I wanted the gain to be the same. And this is the only way I could do that. So um, that would be the only real discrepancy. Other than that, the signal flow is exactly the same. They're both going to the exact same pieces 
into logic on separate tracks. Okay, so that's signal flow. I'm actually recording onto five tracks altogether, two overheads as you can see. I have a hi-hat mic right here, uh, a kick drum mic right here, and obviously the two snare mics. So why am I doing it this way? Well, you don't normally record drums close mic exclusively. There's usually room mics, overhead mics. So at the end of the day, it's really a mixture of different mics. So I wanted to try and make this as real world as possible. So just wanted to make that clear. So a couple final thoughts here. I haven't proven that the Pile mic is a better mic than the SM57. I've proven that it's a different mic. The fact is, on that particular snare drum, I think the Pile mic sounds better. But that doesn't mean that on a different drum, or maybe a different instrument, or a vocalist, or whatever, that the SM57 um, wouldn't do a subjectively better job because this is subjective. My conclusion is subjective, right? Um, the only objective conclusion that I'm drawing based upon looking at the EQ curves is that the pile mic is picking up more detail on the high end and in the low end and a little less detail in the mid-range. So the SM57 is slightly more of a mid-rangey mic, I think. Look, no mic is neutral. Every mic has different characteristics and therefore major studios have an entire arsenal of different mics because of that. And the other thing is post-production processing is an integral part of recording and what you guys heard was just dry, no processing whatsoever. Here's the thing though, and there's no escaping this. The pile mic is twelve dollars and fifty some odd cents. Like, right? I mean, that is definitely a factor. All right, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, you know, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe, do all that stuff, and uh, I'll definitely see you in the next one. Bye.